get by It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach If you find the same And right now I feel like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. And I'm here with Marty Greif. I'm going to introduce in a second. But Marty, I always like to, to talk about past episodes that are interesting, especially because we're going to be talking about site tuners. If you're watching the video, this is going to be a little bit different because we you'll see Rise25's website on here. We're, he's going to actually critique it real time. And we're going to go through some of the sites that, that site tuners has helped. Um, so we're going to go through this on the actual call. So if you are listening to the audio, you can check out the video on Inspired Insider or go to YouTube as well. Um, past episodes I think would be interesting is I had the founder of Zapier, Wade Foster. That was a great one. Um, the founder of Active Campaign, uh, Jason Vandeboom, and the founder of Wistia, Chris Savage. And he was talking, Marty, early on that when they were really small, they were trying to seem bigger. <laughs> um, and talking about they and all their teams, but really it was just a really tiny company at the time. And he talked about some of the ways that as a tiny company, he wanted to seem bigger. And when you're a big company, he's like, you want to seem smaller, so you're more relatable. So it's just interesting how, how that goes. So check out that and many other episodes. And um, this episode is brought to you by Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. And what we do at Rise25 is we help businesses give to and connect their Dream 100 Relation, you know, relationships by helping you run your podcast. Um, and for me, Marty, the the number one thing in my life is relationships. I'm always looking at a way to give to my best relationships. And over the past over a decade, I've seen no better way to do that than feature and profile the people and companies I admire on my podcast, introducing them to other people that I've had on my podcast or other people on my, my network. So if you are a business, I believe every business should have a podcast, by the way, just like Marty believes every business should look and see, are you optimizing and talking to your customer when they go to your webpage? Um, if you've thought about it, you can go to rise25.com, check out more or email us support at rise25media.com. We've been doing it for over 10 years. Um, today, I'm really excited and big shout out to Tim Ash um, for introducing today's guest. And you could check out his books. He does speaking all over the place and my episode with Tim Ash as well. Um, we have Martin Greif, and he is a conversion rate optimization expert. He's president of Site Tuners. He has over 25 years of sales and marketing experience. He's the author of the book, True Connections, Relationship Marketing in the Digital World. I told him if he has it on Audible, I will 100% buy it, read, listen to it. Um, I just tend to do that. But you can buy it on Amazon as well. Uh, Site Tuners, if you haven't heard of it, they've been doing it forever. Um, they help companies with conversion optimization, A-B testing, personalization, and much more to ultimately help in, you know, the site increase sales profits and improve the user experience. They've worked with clients that you've probably heard of, Nestle, Expedia, Costco, Verizon, Google, and so many more. Marty, thanks for joining me. Well, thank you, Jeremy. Thank you for having me. You know, there's so many directions I want to take this. So um, the first I wanted to start with is your site. You know, okay. um, and have you talk about your site, Site Tuners? It'll be good uh, about, you know, this will allow you to tell us what you do, but also I'm sure that you have split tested, optimized, you have probably tons of software running in the background of this thing. And there's probably been a bunch of different iterations. I'd love for you to talk about what the iteration was before a little bit and then what we're what we're looking at now on the web page and if you're just listening to audio he'll do his best to just describe what we're looking at sure so to really put this in perspective for years and i mean years jeremy we were like the shoemaker's children we were optimizing everybody's site but ours and frankly our site looked like who did it and ran i mean <laughs> old i know it was awful it was just awful and um, it was May of 2019 when this uh, a version of what what is on the screen uh, came up. All right, in the it, it, this is a a much more modern design. But we first started with with looking at the analytics for the old site, 
and we looked at best practices. We weren't even following basic conversion best practices. We, we, would, we would look at somebody's site and we say, well, you need to do this and this is why, and you need to do this and this is why. And then they'd look at our site and go, what? I mean, it's just embarrassing. And so, you know, a little bit later, we'll take a look at your site and, and I'll kind of go through some of the best practices, but we follow now our own best practices. So we put it up based on, on, on what was in the analytics of the old site and best practices. But then the team really got serious looking at the analytics under the covers and figuring out where are people going? What's our bounce rate? Where are they exiting? What are they, what are they trying to accomplish on here? So while this version of the site has been up since May of 2019, there have been multiple iterations. I think there's been like four iterations, all based on real analytics and real testing. And so we have a site that, that is very, very optimized. Now there's one or two things on it that are a little bizarre from a conversion standpoint, but because we're an agency, people want to see certain things. So even though there's a couple of things that go against best practices, we like learned, we well, there's some movement on here. So when you scroll down on the page uh, and you scroll a little bit further, you'll notice that right here, what we have is an animated GIF and there's some movement on that animated GIF, all right? And so, the problem with movement on a website is we are literally animals. And so if you think back 50,000 years ago, all right, uh, we were sitting in a cave, you know, eating our hunk of meat, right? And, and if, if there was some movement, we would look up and, and I'll exaggerate on the video here. It's like, we look up and I, I was like scared. Oh my God, you know, the bear, it's a bear is coming to eat me. Oh my God, a bear. You know, so movement was a the dangerous. fight or flight response. Yeah, exactly activated. right. So what happens is when there's movement on a website, you know, that causes what we call cognitive friction. It interrupts your thought process and, and whatever path you had people going down, they're going to interrupt and go, what's that? What's that? And so I'm not saying all movement is bad. Movement is wonderful. Like on a, on an ad somewhere, because you're on somebody else's site and you want to interrupt their pattern on somebody else's site. But on your site, what you really want to do is you really want to, to engage somebody so that they're, they're getting the story. So there's some things on here that are a little off. Now, we did pick the animation here uh, to try to show what we're doing. So it tells yeah. the story in itself. But way too many times people put animation for no apparent reason. And if we scroll down a little further, actually, it, it already did it. This, uh, this rock, there's a rocket ship on the screen that rocket ship kind of flies in from the side. There, mm. There's no value to, well, no, I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> oh, it, so, there's no value in the rocket ship flying in from the side or some of the animation. But, but we did it because if you don't do things like that, people think, oh, well, you know, this is dated, right? But so first we have to show them, yes, you can do that. And then we tell them why they don't want to do that. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. I like that part, actually, when I was looking at your website this week and I saw this, because the the animation does the animated gift does tell a story of your expertise. So if you're watching it, you can see they're crossing things out on a web page. They're pointing things where where they would reposition them because this is maybe it's going to convert better here. They're crossing right. things out. So I, I I liked that that animation. It showed me your expertise. So I'm like, oh, what is what is the, what are they doing? What are they crossing out there? You know, right. And that's the difference between that and let's say the rocket ship, because it, 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 if you're doing some kind of animation or movement, please, please, please have it add value to the visitor. OK. And uh, I mean, there's some exceptions to the animation rule. I'm, it's not or, or the movement rule. It's not a hard yeah. and fast rule for everything. So, for example, if your site is inspirational or if your site um, uh, you know, is, is, uh, you know, you're, you're selling like skiing trips. You want to show like maybe a, a video of some skiing. There's things you might want to do that makes sense. So it's not a hard and fast rule, but there has to be a real reason why you're doing yeah. it. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll get, I'll get off my soapbox. No, let's no <laughs> keep going. I mean, talk about some of the components on here. Cause I know <clears throat> I've watched other, I'm curious, what did, what do users do? Because sometimes what we want them to do um, on our site and what they actually do are two different things. And that's what you help people with. 
And I know you've talked about different tools like Mouseful where you could actually watch them. Sure. What have you found when people go to this page? Um, what do they tend to do? Or maybe the old version, what do they tend to do from the analytics and how you changed it to what we're looking at now? Well, interesting that, that there are some changes. So, for example, in our menu, all right, and our, our menu is, is simplified. It says services about us, our clients, and resources. That's basically the menu, right? And so that uh, that um, is the rule of of three to five. So people can process between three to five things, and, and or they can get overwhelmed. And so we always try to help make sure that the menus make sense for people. But in our analytics, we saw that the number one pages people went to was services, and the number two was the about us. Now, in the old site, uh, the about us, it, they weren't in this order at all, right? Mm. And so we basically changed the order based on what people were actually doing. Now, there's also some other best practices on here. In addition to letting them go down the path that they would want to, there's a phone number on there. Real companies have a phone number in the top right-hand corner. And I've actually said this to, to people multiple times that, you know, if you've got a phone number and it's in the top left-hand corner and I don't see it, well, if I don't see it, it doesn't exist, right? And so people are expecting to see it in a certain way. And the same is true for mobile. They expect to see the mobile icon, the phone icon. And then we've got a call to action. Speak with a conversion expert, all right? That's what we do and that's what makes sense. Also, underneath our logo, it says a tagline of conversion rate optimization. And the reason that that's there is it doesn't matter what page you land on, you're going to have our logo and our tagline underneath it. So you're not confused about what we do, right? A lot of times you land on a, a website from an SEO perspective and you land on some page and you're like, well, what is this, right? And the, the thing is, when somebody lands on a website, they ask themselves three questions. Am I in the right place? How do I feel about this? And what am I supposed to do here? And if you're not answering those three questions, like in milliseconds, you're lost. And because the am I in the right place question is partially dependent upon the upstream messaging, and you don't control what page they may land on, you have to answer that question on every page. Am I in the right place? Yes, I'm looking for conversion rate optimization. Okay, I'm in the right place. And then the second is, how do I feel about it? Well, you'll notice on our website, we've got a phone number. The, and we've tested this, I can't tell you how many times, all right? Phone number is the largest trust symbol on the face of the planet in every country we've tested it, all right? And they, people expect it. Real companies have a phone number. And for anybody listening, if you're saying, well, I don't want phone calls, guys, please have it go to a nice voicemail system where you give somebody some love, right? It will increase the number of calls you get, but it will also increase your conversions because you're a real company, all right? So, and you'll also notice trusted by over 1,500 clients, including. So that's a trust bar, all right? And it shows that. And, you know, so we're, we're giving people reasons to, to, to do it. So how do I feel about it? It's a modern design. It's got trust. I feel pretty good. And what am I supposed to do here? You'll notice we train people with colors. The, uh, the orange with the black is our primary call to color, uh, uh, call to action. So people know, and we train them with colors. Click here, click here. Then we've got a secondary call to action, which has got you know the orange on it with, and it's transparent. So, so by training people with colors, no matter what page they're on, as they go deeper and deeper in the site, subconsciously they will know, oh, I should click on this or I should do this. And so we're training people. This is all best practices. And here's, you know, when I review a site and we work with someone, it has not been unusual for us to spend literally 30 minutes not scrolling on their site at all, just talking about what we see in that top frame. And, and, and sometimes it feels like I'm beating them over the head with a dead fish. You know, I mean, I feel bad, but, you know, it's it, all for, it's all in in for love, you know. It's all it to is, help them. It, it, yeah. it really is. Although I will, I can I share one story. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So I was talking to a, a, a client who will remain nameless before they were client, and uh, I was on. I was deep in their their review, looking at, it, and something happened. I, I something it was some weird thing, and I went, "Oh my god, that is the stupidest thing I've ever seen." It just, it just, it just came out. I, I just. You shouldn't talk that way to people. I, it just came out of me. I was like, oh, my God. And, and, and so I'm continuing on. And, you know, we're deeper in the site. 
and it did it again. I went, oh my God, you did it again. I said, if this happens again, and they were in St. Louis, I said, I'm getting on a plane, I'm flying to St. Louis, I'm rolling up a newspaper, I'm whacking you in the nose, okay? This is bad, don't do this, this is bad. So we recorded that, we sent them the recording. About two weeks later, they called back and they said, we want to hire you, okay? They said, we played the recording for everybody in the company, about 50% of the company listened to the recording and, and they had like 120 people. And they said like 50% actually listened to it. And they said, oh, we need to hire the guy that's gonna fly to St. Louis, roll up a newspaper, whack us in the nose. <laughs> I mean, and we got a really nice deal out of that and helped them. But it just, I mean, I, I, was, I was just being real. And it, it, I was so surprised by what I saw. It just escaped me, right? I wasn't trying to be mean. It just, what was popping up? Was it? I, I, you know, it was some kind of weird overlay that was popping up. So, so you know how um, uh, we talk about don't interrupt me and don't make, you know, in, in the process and that and cognitive friction. I'm on a page going there and it's like they were going, it, it was almost like they were talking about subscribe to our service and you'll get this. And all of a sudden, blue banana. It's like, <laughs> What? It was just like this weird thing that popped that it made no sense whatsoever. And, and it probably was some executive in their company thought, you know what? We need to tell them about this. No, just no. Anyway, I, I get carried away. I love it. Yeah. Well, are there other, so as you see here, I love that you, you said the, the um, users are going to services. You could see our services is nice in orange you could see that's where you are pointing people to go or speak with the conversion expert at the top Correct. and you have all you know all these elements although it's very clean and it looks great it is a thought out reason for all of these things and tested it's yeah. not it's always thought out it's tracked it's measured and it's tested all right and because at the end of the day and, and that's the other thing if you're not measuring things you can't improve them and it's, it is amazing how many times we we and we fell into the same category. We, we had analytics, you know, but in the old days, we were so busy, we never looked at them. How embarrassing is that, right? So, I love anyway, it. Anyway, so now there's people dedicated to actually making our site better and better and better. And we've not only made the website better, we've actually uh, made our blog better, which is almost impossible for people to do. So we do on the blog what we call content for conversion. And, and so... Uh, so it's a very different kind of thought process, you know, on a blog. And we've actually done this for a number of clients too. And you can pick, uh, pick um, the scarcity marketing one, for example, uh, article, uh, you know, yeah. So there's an article that you're, you're clicked on scarcity in, in e-marketing, all right? And it's part of the persuasion series. Now, here's what we learned, okay? On the right-hand side, we've got an ad, all right, for us, you know, for, you know, actually it turns out to be for my book right now, all right? But in here, what we learned is if you give people a summary, okay, we tell them how long it's going to be to, to read it, and we say it's about five minutes, we tell them it's part of a series, and then we've got some bullet points down below, so you know what it's got, that's actually allows people to click on them to go to anchors within there. As you scroll through this, what we found is more people are making it all the way through the bottom of these articles than they were before. So we were looking at where the drop-off points were, 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100 And as we scroll down, uh, things are bolded, things are bulleted, things, there's reasons for all of that and, because people scan, all right? And then stop right there, stop, scroll back up a little bit, you're, you're quick with the mouse there, Jeremy. So you scrolled past, uh, you know, a call to action in the middle where it says, grow your business with proven conversion rate, optim uh, optimization expertise, subscribe to our email. So in the middle of the article, we have a little ad because we've earned the right at that point to ask for something. We've already given them, I mean, and we spent a lot of time in our articles. We've already given them high quality uh, content. So we have earned the right to ask for something. And then if we continue scrolling down, all right, and we get, you can go to the bottom, you can see this is, this is long, you can see again, things are bolded, things are numbered, right? We've made it really easy to read. We've got examples on here. So people can scroll through this 
scan it really easily. And then when they get to the very, very bottom of this, all right, there's another call to action, which says subscribe to, to the email. Now, we've tested different um, calls to action. We've tested, you know, everything from talk to us to, um, to subscribe. And depending upon the type of article it is, we have different calls to action that make sense. So when you're doing a blog post or even any content heavy page, what I would ask people to think of is give before you get give value, provide value. And then if you've provided value, you've earned the right to ask for something. All right. And that's what we've done. And I will tell you our conversion rate on our blog has gone up. Our bounce rate has lowered and our engagement on these pages has gone up. So again, we're tracking everything. Now, most people don't track their blogs. We've learned that, you know, but, but there is gold in your blog if you do it right. Now, Will the blog ever convert the same way that your main pages will? No. But if you put the right calls to action to it, you can actually get them to sign up for something and potentially drip market, which actually goes to something else that you said, Jeremy. And I'm sorry, I, I'm on the, I'm on, I feel like you're on a roll. Marty Keep going. Show. This is like a monologue. And here's <laughs> Johnny. No, here's Marty. But it's uh, the issue here is, is when, when you're, you put the right offer in place here, they're going to subscribe to it, all right, or sign up for it. If you put the wrong offer in place, they're not. So on your websites, if you if you think about giving them some high quality stuff and then have the offer make sense. So this on this page here is all about content. We're offering them more content, right? So it just makes sense. More Fair the enough? same. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're looking at this, um if you're not, I'll describe it, but you could see how they've described the subscribe because there's a lot of different ways to do this. I'm sure they've tested this, which is subscribe oh, yeah. to the site tuners weekly email. And then there is a, well, why should I subscribe? And they have grow your business exponentially with proven conversion rate optimize, optimization expertise. And then instead of just having like a subscribe button, they actually describe it more with the button that says get weekly strategies, techniques, and offers. Yep. Yeah. So this is, you could check out, um, if you go to sitetuners.com or if you're looking at this, you can go to sitetuners.com slash their blog and then search some of the great content they have. And this one in particular is scarcity marketing and e-commerce, how fear is part of the conversion process. So they have some, a lot of great content here. You can check it out. Um, I love that. Marty. Thanks for sharing that. And one thing, so you, you know, we're, we walk through this top page and people probably can focus a lot of time and energy just on the above the fold of their website, what they were looking at when someone clicks. And um, I love for you, I'm going to go down because the next thing I want to talk about is some of the, I want to, I, what stuck out to me was the coastal insurance, 78.5% increase in leads. And we're going to walk through their site in a second, but any um, people love to hear about different tools and software. Are there any other, any recommendations out there that people that you like and people can test out? Well, for conversion rate optimization, uh, well, the, the, let's start with the base. You have to have your, your analytics installed and installed correctly. I, I can't tell you how many times we see analytics, but they've got no goals in them or they are on an e-commerce site. They don't have e-commerce enabled. So if you don't know what's happening on your website, I don't know how you're ever going to fix it. So step number one, and I'm begging you all, if you're listening to this, please, 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 please have your analytics set up, all right? Track what's going on on your website. And it's not a one and done, okay? It is it, because your pages change, your goals change, you know, you've got new landing pages. So you wanna make sure that you've got Google, well, I, I will go use Google for now, Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager, and the Google Search Console, all right? So, so if you use the Google suite of tools, all right, that will give you a really good look at what's going on in your site. And then above and beyond that, depending upon the volume of, of conversions you get per day, you might be able to do testing. And if you're gonna go with the testing route, you can use a free tool like Google Optimize. They've got a free version of it, all right, and it's, it is uh, uh, obviously integrated with their other tools. You could buy uh, or subscribe to a tool like 
you know, Optimizely or Visual Website Optimizer. So there's plenty of testing tools out there. Um, but let's talk about the basics of testing before I answer the rest of your question, Jeremy. To test, you have to have a minimum of 10 conversion actions per day per device type. So what do I mean by that? All right. So your conversion action should be somebody filled out a lead form or somebody bought something or somebody subscribed to something, whatever it is on your site. And I don't care what it is. It's the end conversion action. If you've got 10 of those per day, and by device type, I mean desktop versus mobile because they react differently, you can test. But the test, you can do what's known as an A-B test where you, you put up one version versus another, and it's probably going to run for about 30 days unless you've, got, you've knocked it out of the park because it takes a while to get to what's known as statistical significance so that you know you actually have a winner there. All right? And I will, not that I want to make it tougher, but in a perfect world, you've got more than 10 per day because it, you'll get to significance faster. And if I really want to be difficult, not that that's a goal, but I would really like to see 10 conversions per day, per device type, per channel. All right, I've added in another thing. Because your organic traffic acts differently than does your PPC traffic or your social traffic. So it's all about understanding that user intent. So it, if in a perfect world, you've got enough to do it by you know, 10 a day per device type you know, uh, per channel, you can test. Now, if you don't have that, you could use what we call micro conversions, which is they get another step further in your process. But that's probably a discussion for a whole nother day, right? Um, the next level of tools that you need on here is it's really important to have um, uh, some type of recording uh, or heat mapping tool. And you mentioned one earlier, mouse flow, there's, there's Lucky Orange, there's Hotjar, there's, there's a bunch of these. Now, here's the thing. Uh, and all of the people that have these tools will hate me when I say this, but these tools eat up resources, all right? So you're, what you're best to do is you turn them on, you run, you turn them off. You turn them on, you run, you know, for however long you turn them off. And the reason I say turn them off is because Google will penalize you for speed. And if these things are eating up too much, you know, you could get penalized. So you want to get your data. So I'm not saying you, you only run the tool and then you get rid of the tool. It's good to have the tool for long periods of time. Things change. So I would really love to see that, all right, is to have some type of, you know, heat mapping recording tool. The next tool on the list is some type of exit pop. And, and I'm going to talk about exit pop versus, uh, you know, just a, uh, an entry pop. And we actually did a, uh, you know, I think there's a post on this. Entry pops are bad, all right, because an entry pop, basically I've gotten to your site and something pops up. I don't know who you are. I don't know if I like you or trust you. And you're shouting at me, right? With, hey, give me something. No, no. And we've had people say to us, well, when we put an entry pop, it improved our conversion rate. And the answer to that is because your underlying website was awful. If you had a high converting website, you wouldn't have an entry. The, the, the statistics would show that it'd be worse. So if your, your, your entry pop made things better, you have to fix your site. It's that simple. Now, exit pops, time pops, those are all make a ton of sense. Card abandonment, all of that makes sense. Even on pops in, uh, in it's not just in e-commerce. You've got a form. People are filling out a form. And if you've got too many fields, what fields are they bailing on? You need to know these things, okay? Or do they get to the very bottom? You know, you, talk, you talked about our call to action making sense. We've actually tested calls to action where people fill out a form and they get to the bottom. And what is the call to action? Submit. I, I got it. We've tested this. Unless your visitor is a fan of like 50 shades of gray, they don't want to submit. Okay. Submit is not <laughs> a good word. No, you're laughing at me, Jeremy. I'm telling you. It's once funny. While, no, I'm serious. Yeah. Once in a while, submit works. But for the most part, you're better off to, to have the call to action be what they get. Okay. So, all right. Yeah, no, I love it because it's so, when you say it, it's so obvious, but we just kind of default to what the default is sometimes. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So we're at, thanks for, I love that. Thanks for the, sharing those, Marty. Selected work. So we're here, you see coastal insurance, you know, if you're on their website, you scroll down on site tuners, 
You see cars.com, Darwin's Pet, BBQ Guys, uh, Bev Bevels or Bevels, um, Bevels. Bevels. Yeah. And the coastal insurance, I thought we'd stick there. Sure. And it is 78, it says 78.5% increase uh, in leads and PPC landing page test. So I pulled up their page here for us to, for you to kind of make a few comments on. Sure. Well, let's start with, they've been a client for about five years now. And when they first came to us, they were pretty small uh, and they're not today. Let me tell you, this is a this is a massive company now. But when they first came to us and I was working with the owner, um, uh, I couldn't charge him for, for our advice. And so we made a deal. I gave him free advice and he's up, he was up in Long Island. And so I asked him to send me um, a dozen bagels because we're down in Florida and you can't get good bagels in Florida. So he sent uh, bagels with the schmear and everything. Right? Are you from so New York? I'm from New Jersey. Yeah. New Jersey. Okay. And my wife was born and raised in, uh, in Manhattan. So yeah. So I would you like your bagels. Star. Yeah. So you. yeah. I, I and you. pizza, you can't get good pizza in Florida, you know, sorry, Floridians. But anyway, so, so we got the bagels and I and, think, I think, you know, you got at the better end of the deal. I mean, well, in I my was, opinion, when it comes to food. The, yeah, <laughs> I mean, the weight of my heart, let me tell you, it's real simple. <laughs> and anyway, so we, uh, we, I, I gave him some, some advice. He took the advice and he got an immediate result. And then he came back and said, listen, I need more advice. I need to pay you. So we, we did a small project for him. And then he moved to a retainer with us. All right. And we, we, we've been, he's been on retainer for forever. And we've gone from, from, I guess, three site designs back to this current site. So the, the case study is on the middle design where when we got to do the redesign, it increased his conversion rate by like 78%. More people were converting. And we not only did uh, conversions on the main conversion pages, we also worked on his SEO pages. He, he was really good with SEO, but we do something called SEO for conversion, which I alluded to in our blog. So we added in the, in the, in, in the SEO pages, all sorts of conversion factors to get people to take action. So, and then on his PPC landing pages, we do what we call PPC for conversion, where again, it's all about lining that user intent. So this newest version here um, has got everything you would potentially ask for, for conversion. And so if we scroll to the very top, and again, people ask themselves three questions when they land on a page. Am I in the right place? You know, how do I feel about this? What am I supposed to do here? And you'll notice it's got a phone number up in the top right hand corner. It's, it's, and we know what pages they go to. And then we made it easy. Home insurance made easy. Protect your home at the best price. And then we've got what you get. Slash your insurance costs up to 30%. Get superior rates in minutes. Choose right. And then there's a trust bar. Trusted choice. Uh, he's got an A plus rating for the Better Business Bureau. He was a 2020 insurance winner. You know, and then we got another trust bar below. Compare top quotes from top rated companies. Travelers, MetLife, and all those. So we're using other companies' logos as a level of trust. And then the call to action block is get homeowners insurance code, because that's what you get. And the and so the title of the block makes sense. And then so let us find the right insurance for you. And we've minimized all the things we asked them for, because it used to be a lot more, and then get the quote now. So if they don't do that and they scroll down because they, some people want to read, a lot of people don't even scroll anymore. They just fill it out. And then homeowner's insurance is one, two, three. One, request a code. Two, we shop for you. Three, choose the best option for you. And then why homeowner's insurance? You'll notice there's another trust bar as seen on CNBC, CNN Money, ABC News, the Wall Street Journal. More trust, right? And then why coastal insurance? And you'll notice as we scroll down, there's the why, and then there's more trust bars, and then get a quote, another bite at the apple, okay? Because we've earned the right to do that. And as we scroll down a little bit further, we now have verified Google reviews because people love him. So we put the reviews up there, right? More trust, areas we serve, again. And so they, that makes me feel good that they're in my area, all right? And I'll, I'll tell you a story about this. We... um. We were designing all of this, and we've done things for in the past. But when we did the redesign, we redesigned the home page, we redesigned the the uh, homeowner's insurance page, 
We did the fund insurance and we did one of each. And we did a high value home insurance page. And if you go to the high value page and you look at uh, what's on the screen here, you've got the, 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 a really nice picture designed for New York's finest homes, a million plus, it's got trust on it and so on. And he, he, this design actually helped inform the rest of the design for the website. And the last page that I would show you on this, because again, this is stuff we've tested, people go to the About Us page. And I don't know if you've previously loaded, but yeah, the About Us page. And because I've had a relationship with these people for so long, I actually wrote the words myself, even though we have copywriters. And we put in our core values, relationships matter, trust is earned, integrity is own reward, everybody wins. These are the bullet points. And then it's again, gut trust, who we are. And when you scroll down a little bit further, we then talk about all of those things, relationships matter, trust is earned, why those things matter. And people read this. And then we scroll further and it's companies we work with. So we're using these other companies as trust. And then we go even further down on the page. And the call to action is we'd love to earn your business, right? That's the call to action on the contact. Not fill out this form, we'd love to earn the business. Now below it is fill out the form, but the title is we'd love to earn your business. And then one of the things that we're really proud of is if you scroll a little bit further and we tell all of our clients to do this, if you're hiring, you know, have something there. We'd love to have you join our team. We're growing, here's what we're looking for. And so it shows that they're real, they're growing and they care about people. This matters, right? Anyway. Uh, I'm probably, again, I on love my it. high horse. No, but I love it. His conversion rate boosted yet again. Now, the old design that's in the case study that we did, in fairness, that old design worked really well years ago, but it got a little dated. You got to refresh your site. People expect things to look different. So. Thank you. All right, that was great. Um, <clears throat> and I will probably have to re-listen to this to, to pick up some of your um you know, the great tips here. I wanted to also bring up rise 25 and have you, you can, you can, uh, you don't have to pull punches. And if sure. you scream, I'm going to fly to Chicago and hit you with a newspaper. <laughs> that's totally fine with me. Uh, <laughs> so here's what we're seeing at, at rise 25. And, and I don't know what he's going to say here. We have not talked about this at all. So <laughs> and you're looking a little nervous there, Jeremy. I, I'm, really I, <laughs> I would love for you to, to rip this to shreds. I'm, I'm, ha I'm looking forward to this. Okay. So you've got your logo, Rise 25, in the, in the, in the top left-hand corner. And underneath, you've got We're Hiring, which is nice, okay, which is great. But I would really like to know a little bit more about what you do in six to ten words, if possible. And the reason I would like that underneath there or around there is I don't know what page I'm going to land on, right? Uh, so if I land on your homepage, you've got a really nice banner. It says what you do, right? I get it. But what if I land on, you know, like your course page or your Dream 100? Are you telling me what you do on each and every page? Or are you assuming that they kind of got there from page to page to page? And Jeremy, you can't do that. Yeah. You don't know where they came from, okay? Totally. So, so I don't know what your six to 10 words would be. And there's a lot of effort that goes into that, but you want to have, now for us, it was easy. Three words, conversion rate optimization, right? For you, it may be a little bit harder, all right? But at the end of the day, if you do that underneath there, no matter what page they're going to land on. And then here's the thing. I don't know without scrolling enough about you yet. For all I know, you're some guy in a cave in like the mountains, you know, going to go get my credit card. You're some evil genius going, oh, I don't know you yet, right? And you've got no trust on you. You've got, you've got no phone number, all right? Real companies have a phone number, top right-hand corner. And I'm saying you got a contact thing, but I want to see the phone number, right? Or if I hover over contact, the phone number pops up, something, but I got nothing. And then how, you know, calling B2B businesses. Okay, that's nice. How any B2B business can create a referral and client pipeline. The Rise 25's Dream 100 strategy connects you to your ideal clients, okay? Free training is one of them. Call, get more referrals. Schedule a call with us now. All right, fine. But here's the thing. How long have you been in business? How many people have you helped? How many, you know, so what I would have loved to have seen, and I'll make this up because I don't know your numbers. Join a thousand companies worldwide who have increased their pipeline to the tune of $2 billion. 
Okay. I, and again, I don't know. I mean, if, you, if, if you're working with people in their pipeline and you get from them what the value of their pipeline is and you put that in there and, I, and you've got something that says, you know, join, uh, you know, join uh, 100 companies and six continents across six continents who've generated an additional billion dollars in business. Again, I'm, I'm putting all of it together in here. When I go here, I'm going to go, oh, these are the guys, right? I don't know if you're the guys right now. All I know is it's a website. There's no trust. And I don't know that you, you, you know, this is what you've got is what we call marketing happy, happy talk. Okay. The Rise 25 Dream 100 strategy connects you to your ideal client. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. But you didn't prove it to me, right? So. Point taken, 100%. All right. So, yeah. so then without scrolling, free training, get more referrals. Okay. Schedule a call. Now, I didn't do this. So I, when I looked at your, I looked at your other site, Jeremy. So I haven't looked at, the, I haven't seen this. So we're both doing this live. So click on free training for me. Okay. All right. And so it's taken a second to, to get there. All right. So here's, <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. So this is the kind of thing where you surprise. I'm going to fly to Chicago, roll up a newspaper and whack you in the nose with it. Here's the problem with this, all right? I was on your website, which looked a certain way. You took me off your website to another website. I don't know if I'm in the right place. I, I don't know, you know, I, you know, I don't know what this is. You know, I don't see your branding anywhere on here. I, I, was, like, I, I was like, what happened, okay? Was it a virus and it took me to like a thing that's gonna, you know, steal my information? That's <laughs> how I feel here, Jeremy. I mean, seriously, Does, do you think I'm going to feel good about this page that looks absolutely nothing like the previous page? No, you want to see it, you know, some type of continuity. Something. Yeah. Yeah. Don't surprise me. This is the kind of surprise that, 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 that kills, kills conversions. Okay. So if you either uh, do one of a couple things, if you can brand this better on this page so that it matches, great. If you can't brand it, have either a pop-up that tells you that I'm going to, you know, uh, our, you know, webinar. Tell me what's going to happen so I'm not surprised, or have it go to an internal page and embed it in your internal page. Those are your three choices. But one of your choices is not to do what you're doing. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's go back to your website because that was so much fun. All right. <laughs> Let's go back to schedule a call with us. I can't wait to see what this does. <laughs> right, Let's schedule see. Schedule a call with us. Okay. Up pops uh, a video. Uh, and so you want them to watch a video first. Okay. Uh, so, so on the previous page, so bear with me one second. So click on the previous page. The call to action was schedule a call with us. That's what you promised. Schedule. That was the promise, right? Schedule a call with us. We go to the next page and it's like, listen to this. What? I'm sorry. I wanted to schedule a call with you. What is this? Okay. And, and, and why is that? Where is it about scheduling the call? As a matter of fact, you don't even have to schedule a call with us thing until like kind of the bot, you know, the, well, oh, it's hidden on the top a little bit too. And book a call. And by the way, book a call is different from schedule a call. So you're using different words. You've hidden it. Can you go back to our website just for a second? Okay. And can, so can you go to click speak with a conversion expert? All right. And so uh, uh, the call to action on our site is speak with a conversion expert, right? And you'll notice the title of the page when you land here is speak with a conversion expert, right? And so, and I know it's taking a little bit of time to load because yeah. of Zoom. This is oh, my internet. Yeah, I know, yeah. it's okay. Yeah. It is what it is. But you'll notice we give them a trust, but ready to get better than that? Here's your, we tell you what you're going to get, okay, as you scroll. So the title matches what was promised. We tell you what you're going to get, right? So there's no confusion whatsoever. This page is killing it. Killing it. Right? Now compare that to yours. <laughs> I have to. It's like, what? <laughs> it's like, it, it, there's a complete disconnect of what was promised, okay? Yeah. And what is delivered. Now, I understand what you're trying to do here, 
but this really should have been, you know, so this should be maybe step- should you go something like this, right? You should just go to something like that. Well, that's actually the next step in our process where yeah. it goes to the calendar. Got it. Tell me what I'm going to get. If I'm going to schedule a call, yeah, because a lot of people, here's the thing, when we've tested this, if you don't tell me what I'm going to get, then what's going to happen is I may or may not book the call. But if you tell me what I'm going to get in my call, I will feel better. And so your completion rate on the booking will go up. Does that make sense, Jeremy? Yep, totally. So you've got stuff in there, but it's all in the wrong place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's in the wrong order. Sort of. Right. Yeah. And then, um, and then, um, yeah, let's go back to, uh, to your homepage. All right. So let's, uh, by the way, is this helpful for you? You think this totally is helpful? helpful. Okay. It's great. It's fantastic. Okay. All right. So, so we scroll down a little bit and you say, we help a B, B2B clients get more. So that's what you do, right? So actually scroll up a little bit, a little bit further. Okay. Uh, all right. So you're not connecting with my pain here. All right. So you're using, we help B2B clients. This is what we call the opera school of marketing. It's all about me, 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 me. I want to tell you about me. I don't care about you. Right. (laughs) So, so we don't want to do the opera school of marketing. So what we really want to do is frame this for them. Okay. Are you looking to get more? Are you a B2B company looking to get more clients? All right. You know, how are you engaging with your clients? You know, and then you can say the, the, the we statement, but it's got to be about them first, right? It's not about you first. It's always about them first. And if you, you then, then you, and then you, you, here's the next thing you do that just drives me nuts on here. You, when you scroll down a little bit further, okay? So you got this video, right? And it's a, it's Rise 25, it's got a little description, Rise 25 podcast and discussion at IRC, June, 2019. So um, how long is the video? And how uh, would I know? I, I don't know until I yeah. click on it. Yeah. yeah, okay. And what am I going to learn in that video, actually? Good point. <laughs> so yeah. if you're going to have a video, all right, pre-sell me on why I want to watch it and what I'm going to learn, all right? So, and I know we didn't plan this in advance, but if you went to uh, another uh, client of ours, Heller Tax Grievance. Okay. Yeah. What is it called? Uh, Heller, H-E-L-L-E-R. Tax. Grievance. Oh, actually it showed up. It was, it was below there. When you were doing it, Heller tax grievance. Uh, there is now. No, I'm sorry. That might have. Yeah, there you go. Click. So uh, this is an extremely high converting site. Okay, and it's loading and doing its thing. It's going to take a second or two here, and so. But look at his video. All right, that you've got here. How we can reduce your taxes and property taxes. Learn in 60 seconds. How does this process work? Is there any confusion about what it is, what I'm going to learn, how long it's going to take? And look at all the trusts on here. And look, you have nothing to lose but your taxes. Pay no upfront fees. <laughs> contingent. I mean, honest to God, if you're in Long Island and you don't call Heller Tax Grievance, there's something wrong with you, okay? <laughs> look at all the, I mean, this man works his tail off and, and is, is killing it for his clients. And it's clear that's what's happening on his website. Now, if we go back to yours and contrast it real quick, and that was an exit pop. It wasn't an entry pop on his. It was an exit. So I got these videos. And, and why do I want to, you know, you know, why do I want to, you know, go to the, watch that video? What am I going to learn? What's in it for me? You got to always answer the question, what's in it for me? Because right now I basically get to see two guys yakking, kind of look like they're friendly. Maybe I'll watch. I don't know. I'm not trying to be. This is great. Party, but... I love this, Marty. <laughs> okay. I I love the feedback. I appreciate it. Okay. You know, we all have a lot to learn from you, Marty. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna have to go back and listen to it and send it to to everyone so they can they can learn from from our mistakes and we'll have to correct these mistakes. And 
Um, I have one last question, Marty, before sure. we uh, before we end, and I just want to encourage everyone to go to sitetuners.com and check out more about what they're working on, what they're doing, check out their blog. Um, and if you have questions, you know, obviously it's, it's there. Speak with a conversion expert. It's right there uh, if you want to check it out and check out other episodes of Inspired Insider and check out Rise 25. My, my last question is, um, you know, about... I don't know if it's my last question, but I've, <laughs> it's like, I will make it my last question, but there, there are two I always love to hear about. And one is just quickly some of your favorite resources and books. And because I was listening to another episode you've done, um, How to Win Friends and Influence People oh, is yeah. one of your favorites. And, and I want to hear that. But I also, I want you to, so I guess I have two last questions. That's one. And my second one will be about Early on your, in your career, I thought it was really interesting about telling the story a little about the communication training um, oh, piece. Okay. And, but, but start with the, the books, okay. just some of your favorite books or resources. Obviously, we have your book, True Connections, Relationship Marketing in the Digital World, which you're mm -hmm. looking at. If you're looking at the, the video, you could see it on the right-hand side and check it out. And I'm going to just try and convince them to get the Audible version so I can listen <laughs> to it because I know myself and my habits. Um, what are some of your favorites, books, resources? Well, I will tell you the two books that have changed my life. Okay. And one of those is Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. And it's actually mandatory reading within the company. Um, I make sure that everybody reads it. Uh, it is an oldie, but goodie, but honestly, people haven't changed. So some of the references may be a little dated and so on, but it is an amazing book. And what he says is, you need to read it, I think he says twice a year. And, and I do try to read it twice a year because we always fall back into our old bad habits. And so I've, I've done sales training over the years. I, 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 I've fallen back on that book over and over and over again. The other book uh, that I read, uh, and this has gotta be about 25 or 20, 25 years ago, was written by uh, Beverly DeAngelis, uh, uh, Dr. Beverly DeAngelis, uh, PhD. Uh, and she wrote a book, What Women Want Men to Know. And it's really thick. It's on my shelf back here. And I read this book and I got into about the first 70 pages of the book. And I'm like, oh my God, women cannot possibly be this dysfunctional. This is not possible. And then I read a little further and I went, oh my God, men cannot possibly be this, this dysfunctional. And it turns out we all are. We are wired differently. We think differently. And I actually remember sitting in, in, in work and, I, and asking the question of both men and women. So during the day, do you do this, this, and this? And all the women said, yeah, we do. And I was like, oh my God, just like in the book. And then I asked for the guys, and because I didn't want to just base it on me. Guys, do you do? Oh yeah, th we do. That. And I was like, oh my God, we're a mess. It's amazing that we ever have more children and procreate. We don't communicate with each other at all. And that book helped me communicate better with both men and women. Okay. It's again, a dated book, but mm. oh my God, it made me honest to God, a better uh, boss, a better employee. It made me a better um, uh, husband, you know, uh, maybe a better father, you know, uh, you know I'll even admit and, and, and forgive me. It actually made me a better lover. My wife was quite happy. Uh, we won't go into any more detail than that. <laughs> but I'm telling you, it, it had a massive impact on my life. So if you want to be, you know, a better boss, employee, you know, uh, spouse, you know, parent or lover, hopefully not with the same people, um, then that's a great book to read. Okay. I think so. you should reach out to Dr. Beverly and write her landing page for her. I mean, that's <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> be like. I can write your landing page and get it converting. That's true. <laughs> we'll have to check it out. We'll have to, we'll have to email her afterwards. Like, Hey, you can include some of this copy in there. Yeah, um, perfect. I had a, a person that I had met Marty that um, wrote a book, what men know about women. And it was a spoof book and the whole thing was blank. <laughs> so it should be coupled with her book. Like get what men know about women, which is all blank. Yeah. And then her book is, you know, is a package, is a package Perfect. deal. Perfect. So that kind of goes to the next piece, Marty, which I alluded to is early in your career. Um, 
one of the things I think was really, um, I don't know if it was a milestone, but a turning point, uh, talk about where, when you had, you got communication training what happened with that. Okay. So this goes back, oh Lord, 30 years ago. And I was director of product marketing, um, and the vice president of marketing had hired me and he was upsetting me because he was coming in late, leaving early. And I was there a month and I called him on it. I said, John, you're, you're leaving early. You're coming in. He's well, I just need to balance you out because you come in early, you leave late. So we just try to balance you out. <laughs> I went, what? He said, no, he said, actually, I gave my notice. He says, you're going to be re reporting directly to the chairman of the board. I said, okay. And I thought, good. So I'm reporting to, uh, uh, to this gentleman. Um, his, uh, his name was Dick and he was a great guy. And at that time, I considered him a lot older because he was, I think he might have even been younger than I am now, right? But, but I remember him being a little older, gray haired. And I thought, all right, this should be interesting. And uh, one day I'm sitting in my office and this consultant came in. He says, hi, my name is Phil. He said, I'm here to help you with your communication problem. I went, oh, what communication problem would that be? <laughs> and he said, well, you uh, are having a problem communicating with Dick. All right. And so I'm here to help you with your communication problem. I went, okay. And he said, we're going to meet for two hours every Tuesday for as long as it takes to improve your communication. And I found out that he was uh, being paid $250 an hour. This is 30, there's a lot of money. So on one side, I was pleased that Dick was going to invest in me. But on the other side, what do you mean my communication problem? So a month goes by and he, I, I've been working with Phil two hours a week on Tuesdays. I'll never forget this for a month. And I said to him, and I'll never forget this. I said to him, I said, well, Phil, you know what? I didn't think I had a communication problem, but at the end of the day, you know, if Dick and I are not communicating, the problem's going to be mine. It's not his. And he stopped and he stood up and he said, he said, you know what? Most people never get there in their life. He said, and so let me paraphrase this just to make sure we're on the same page. He said, you know what? You may think this is all a pile of shit. He said, but you're in dick shit. You're playing in dick shit, all right? Someday you may have your <laughs> own pile of shit, but right now you're in dick shit and you got to communicate the way dick wants you to, all right? And I thought about it and I went, oh my God, he's right. Because communication is all about, you know, making sure that if you're the communicator, your message is being received. And I took something from Phil that I've used, even when I was VP in publicly traded companies, and I'll do this, and I'll, I know you've got people listening, but I'll ask you to describe my hand. So on the camera, I put my, my hand up, and it's facing Jeremy. So Jeremy, if you were to describe my hand, what would you say? You could see the palm, the side of the palm with the fingers. Okay, that's yeah. fair. And if I were to describe my hand and I turn my hand around, because I see the back of my hand because it was facing him palm out, I see fingernails, knuckles, and so on. And so when you've turned it back and forth, there's different sides. So in communication, it's all about knowing what the other person is receiving and making sure that you can articulate what you see and understand what they see. And when you do that, you actually have good communication. And I will tell you in meetings, I would sit there when my teams would be arguing and I just put my hand up and I'd move it back and forth, palm to, you know, to backside, back and forth. And they go, yeah, 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 we know. And they'd say, all right, John, what did you mean by that? And yeah, Susie, I know. And, and they would actually talk and they would communicate and we get problems solved. And basically that's our philosophy. And that's really what conversion rate optimization is all about. It's about communicating your value proposition in the way the other person gets it. And if you're not doing that, you're not converting. It's that simple, Jeremy. Marty, that's a mic drop. Everyone check out SightTuners.com. And Marty, thanks so much. Thank you. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.